Boy, the crowd's going to go wild. We have a tremendous matchup here. Hawks in Plainville go in and out. They, they really established quite the, the rivalry. Albert Pope, a senior from Hawks, 21 and 4. They're shaking hands for the Hawks and Indians going against Dave Schrant, a senior, 18 and 2 from Plainville. Both these boys were fourth in the state tournament last year. Pope finished at uh, 189 pounds, and Schrant finished at 171 pounds. So uh, we've got definitely comparable quality going here. Kirk Baker, head coach for the Hockey Indians. And there goes Pope with a, with a takedown. Grant tried to come over with that headlock and then throw him down, and Pope was able to suck down on it and maintain his, his balance and control and, and drive right into the takedown. And with that drive, he got two points at the minute 20 mark in the first period. How, uh, balance looks, must be crucial to a wrestler. It's absolutely crucial, and it looks like he's got a two-point near fall being held out there by the referee. So uh, evidently he got some back points out of that. And balance is everything. If you don't have your balance, you don't have anything. It's kind of like a politician without an election. <laughs> Nowhere to go. 53 seconds in the first. Four to nothing. He got those two points. He's out in front. Again, Pope, the, the senior from Hoxie. Pope's trying to suck Trent back on the mat, uh, mat now. And of course, Trent would just as soon uh, slide the other way. So uh, we got a little bit of a contest of the wheels here. Again, Hoxie has won the last two state titles. Well, Pope has got that cradle locked up tight. If he can... Well, he can't. <laughs> Referee just called a stalemate, said let's go back to the center. Well, these two, these two teams have gone at each other quite a bit over the last four years, and quite the rivalry has developed, as we said. And both have had a state championship. Hoxie has had two, and before that it was Atwood and then Plainville. Plainville trying to get another state title. Hoxie in the run for second. Earlier today, my younger son asked me how many people live in Hoxie, and I told him to go up there and count them. <laughs> I think they're all here. <laughs> really get behind their community, I tell you. They're just crazy about wrestling in that area. We got a locked hand call coming on Pope. And so that won't do him any good. He, he, was in a, he was in a position to come up with a near fall there, but because he had his hands locked, he couldn't go on and get the point. That's a technical violation. That signal by the referee there was that that was a technical violation of the locking of the hands. Around, the wrestler in the, in the advantage position cannot lock his hands around the body or both legs of the bottom wrestler. Uh, and when they're down on the mat. Now, if the bottom wrestler stands up, he can lock them, and then he's got reaction time to unlock them when he goes down. But if he keeps them locked, then he's got a technical violation. He can lock around one arm, one leg. He can get a head lock, but he can't lock around the body or both legs. Point again, we talk about this Western Kansas tradition. Uh, taking third was uh, Elliott in uh, this tournament. Elliott came into this tournament for Hill City unbeaten. Uh, but he finishes third. He's polling from uh, St. Francis uh, again in, for third. So good job by the wrestlers in the back door. Well, again, we have uh, three wrestlers here from the Colby Regional and one from the Hoisington Regional in the, uh, placing in the top four. Looks like Pope's trying to stay in control here and uh, in pretty good shape right now. Now we're at the minute 42 mark in the second period, 4-1. to one. Pope jumped out in front early with a couple points in the initial 15 seconds of that first period. Pope took second to Colby to Elliott from Hill City at that regional. Uh, in the Northwest Kansas League, he took second to Folding of St. Francis, losing a tough decision, 7-3. to three. Both good wrestlers. And what, he, what he's done right there is he's turned an almost certain escape by Schrant into an almost a near fall for himself. Uh, very good follow through there. A lot, of, a lot of wrestlers would have just turned that loose and let it go, but, but he, hung, he hung on and came down with it and, and almost got the near fall out of it. Pope leading 4-1 to one over Schrant from Plainville, both seniors, minute 31 in the second period. Pope also the Norton Invitational champion. He took fourth in 91 at this weight class. So he's been to state before. Yeah, and Trent took fourth last year at the 171, the weight class just below this. He's just come up a, a weight class this year. Trent so. took first at Hoisington. He beat a wrestler by the name of Freighter to get here in that regional. 
and Prater from Minneapolis finishes fifth in this tournament. I've seen Prater wrestle before, and he's a pretty good hand. So, uh, got, got legitimate credentials here. Definitely, once you get to this point, you've earned the spot, and I'll tell you, two-a-day practices, getting up early in the morning before school, getting your homework done, then going to practice after school, trying to cut away the dedication and the hard work that just accumulates for these guys in the classroom and on the match is just incredible. Pope's going for that cradle again. He, I think he kind of likes it. <laughs> <laughs> it works. Yeah. Scores a lot of points with it. So Nice job to counter by Schrant, though. He's not yes. letting him have it. He got that knee down just in time. That's a good follow there by, by Pope. He could have lost five points on that one, but he was able to get, hang on to that wrist and suck himself through the other side and, and stay on top. Sure had the crowd on their feet as we mark down the final seconds in the second period. Here we go. That's how two periods stand, and you got to wonder how the conditioning comes into play. you got to bet these guys are in fine shape, but boy, when you exert as much energy as these guys had in the first two periods, it's going to be a factor in the third. 4-1. Pope from Hoxie out in front. The only point for Schrant, a penalty point because a technical call against the wrestler from Hoxie for grabbing both hands on that hold. To talk about conditioning, I think we've probably got to be in better shape for this sport than you do for any other sport I know of in high school. I know we used to, our, our kids that didn't play football used to love it when the football players came out that first night because they were always a little bit late and thought they were in shape already and, and it was always fun for them because before they got in shape, the other kids had a chance to beat on them. <laughs> but it's a, it's a very intense sport. People say six minutes is not very long, but six minutes of 100% exertion and activity is a long time. You betcha, and right now we're down to the final minute 29 of the season for these guys. Schrant on top, desperately trying to make something happen. Pope from Hoxie holding on, and Schrant looked up at the official and said, or he's talking to his coach, he's, what should I do? And they're trying to give him some motion, or some move to motion or to turn around. He's trying to set out, he can't do it. Pope was trying to get that Granby Cradle worked in there, and he couldn't get that leg tight enough, but when Trent came around the front, it gave him a chance to suck his head out and just take over the reversal. Got a contact lens coming out here, though. So Pope yeah. picks up two more points as he came out from underneath, and Trent was looking over to the corner, and Coach Brad Fredrickson saying, well, what should we do now? Trying to get some advice, and as he was trying to set up a move, boy, nice job by Albert Pope to come out and get those points in the reversal. Yeah, he could have been in trouble there. Of course, you saw the referee signal to start the injury time. Uh, a, a misplaced contact lens now is part of injury time. Say it's okay if the boys want to wear their contact lenses, but if they have to spend time looking for them, they have to take it out of their injury time. What makes Hoxie's effort the last two years so spectacular, we, we talk about the individual efforts, but it's been quite the team sport for these teams going for the team title. You really have to pull together. Hoxie won the gold, the team title last year with not a single state titleist uh, without a single gold medal for an individual so they really pulled it together as a team and that shows a lot of depth that's uh that's quite an accomplishment that's not the first time that's ever happened i wouldn't think but but it doesn't happen every year it just uh it just takes a lot of a lot of effort on the, on the part of those kids coming through the back door in order to make it work Boy, these guys are just pulling each other around. 49 seconds left in this match at 189 pounds. Boy, six to two though. Pope's still in the lead. This will end the career for both of these guys, both seniors and have just outstanding years. And they're finishing off with an outstanding match. It's uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. We haven't had a bad match yet, a bad match yet tonight. And a lot of times the finals are kind of a dull part of the uh, tournament, but. These finals definitely have not been the dull part. And there's Pope scoring another two points on a single leg and a rubber arm to pull his arm out of there and let the other man fall down on the mat where he can gain control. Eight to two, Pope, the Hoxie Indian out in front. They're gonna get a state champion this year. Six seconds and counting. I wanna ask Coach Baker what he'd rather have, a state champion for an individual or for his team? Well, I don't know. I think he'd rather have the team, but this year he's going to take it. An individual title for Albert Pope. He goes to 22 and 4. The final 8 to 2 over Dave Schrant, the senior from Plainville. And Schrant's record goes to 18 and 3. 
And there's a hand up, and there's the entire community from Hoxie across to stop on their feet. Boy, they come out, don't they? They support their kids. And for Hoxie, that might go a long way in helping them get into second place in this team. Chase right now playing the ladder in front. With 101 points, Joaquini, Hoxie with 81, not counting this last match, St. Francis with 80.5, Toyota right there with, I believe, 78 points. So it's going to be a fun finish here. It's a 189, Pope picks up the win. And again, as we said, Elliott at 189 takes third from Hill City, Poling from St. Francis takes fourth. And so just a tremendous finish, and you're going to see the championship stand here in just a second for 171 pounds. Again, DJ Baskell of Plainville, the champion there. Lucas Dinas, a sophomore from Milwaukee, taking second. Uh, we mentioned Hoxie and uh, their results in the past couple state tournaments. Scott City won the Northwest Kansas League team tournament this year. Hoxie took second, followed by Oakley and then Atwood. And St. Francis took fifth and Goodland Colby and Oberlin. But boy, I tell you, both the MCL and the Northwest Kansas League is just no easy ball in any duel or any tournament. Right now we're getting ready for 100. Uh, mark that 275 pounds or the, the, the heavyweight. And this is the final match of the tournament and uh, we're going to hear the ground shake. I think the earth will move. Josh Dinas, a junior, 